We had Drew McIntyre versus AJ Styles, and this was the portion of the Raw program where Drew McIntyre's music hits, and there's 40-something minutes of television left. And it's like, there's no way they're going 40 minutes. And the answer is, because people are going to wrestle multiple times on the show, because we have 18 available wrestlers for this three-hour Raw show. Strew versus AJ, they go 13 minutes, the match is good. Not a great match, but it's a good match. And all of a sudden, just everybody runs in for the disqualification. Lashley's in there, and then La- the Viking Lashley, Raiders La- La- run La- La- in. La- La- Lashley was the first guy in, so Drew won by DQ. So we... Yeah, when the Viking Raiders came out, it's kind of like, <laughs> we're obviously setting something up, because these guys, like, it's like, they do have a program with AJ and Omos, and AJ and Omos are both out there, but there was no reason for them to come out other than, obviously, they're going to be doing a six-man tag after this match. So then we have the uh, six-man. It just turns into a six-man. So it's Drew and the Viking Raiders versus Lashley, Styles, and Omos. Another 13-minute match. And I don't know if you guys remember this or not, but uh, Drew McIntyre was going to face Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania last year. But COVID struck, and he ended up winning the title in front of an empty building. And so they did a year's worth of stuff with him in empty buildings. And then they took the title off of him. And then he was going to face Lashley for the title at WrestleMania in front of a crowd. And so everyone thought, oh, he's going to win the title in front of a crowd. The the championship win in front of a crowd that he never got a year earlier. But instead, but he, didn't win. But he, didn't win. he is beaten. Okay. So this was WrestleMania in, in early April. Okay. It's now June. So in early April, he loses to Lashley. And they begin to set up the rematches between himself and Lashley. And the whole story is, I want to beat Bobby Lashley. I'm going to hit him with my Claymore, and I'm going to pin him. Well, we did see that. April, May. Now it's the middle of June. Are you kidding me? They had him hit the Claymore and pin Lashley in an unannounced match in the third hour of Raw after all that? Well, I mean, the uh, the idea is that they wanted to prove that he could do it on the go-home show before the pay-per-view where he's getting his final shot. After all that, the story that he needed to hit his claymore on Bobby Lashley, they just did it in a random, unadvertised six-man. Yeah, but it at least... I could not believe my eyes. That that tells me he's losing Sunday. 50-50. I mean, he may be. He may be, he may be losing. Although, Why in the world would he beat Lashley in the go home show in a six man tag? If whoa, he wasn't whoa, whoa, whoa! Wait a minute. That's exactly what you would do. The challenger beats the champion in the six man tag going into the pay per view, especially when it's a baby face challenging a heel. That's exactly what this you would do. This is if- not a weak challenger. This is a guy that it had the win matter. at the whoa, last pay per view, and it was he was screwed out of it. He lost it. He lost at WrestleMania, and it doesn't even matter if you're weak or strong. That's what you do in the tag leading up to the championship match. That's the most simple booking in the world. You don't baby- always do the simple booking. That Claymore is a story that they have been telling us for months now. Is the big culmination of this storyline. That's the thing that they got left in this feud. Is him hitting that Claymore? No, the thing got and they left- gave it away for free on television. No, the thing they have left is is winning the championship and this was a way to tell you yes he can win the championship if he hits the move and now we've seen it and he can because he pinned him with the move so bobby lashley is not unbeatable and he actually has a chance to win because bobby lashley's been booked as unbeatable for months and months other than the, the kofi thing which obviously I was gonna was, say we just saw kofi beat lashley we know he's but it was, not unbeatable. That, was, that was with outside interference this was with no outside interference there were six guys in the match But it was no outside interference. He beat him with the kick. He beat beat him with the kick because AJ tagged Lashley in. Lashley didn't want to get tagged in. Lashley wasn't paying attention. He He turned around and got kicked. But he still, well, it should have been cleaner, but he still beat him with the kick. That was as much as they were going to do. I thought this was insane. It's classic booking. It's been done since the beginning of time. That's how you build up a championship match with a tag team, especially. Yeah, it's also you hit Dakota Kai with the Eclipse to prove the Eclipse works on Raquel, and then you hit Raquel, and you argued that one. Now this they, one's okay? They they hit it on. No, I didn't. I argued the exact same thing. He She hit it on Raquel. 
if she hit it on Dakota Kai, it would, would, would it matter? That'd be Bobby Lashley hitting AJ with the kick, um, which would have been fine as well. You didn't have to beat Lashley, but it's better to beat Lashley. So, you know, I actually, I'm arguing the same thing. You put the big move, the challenger takes out the champion before the title match when it's a ba- you know, with the big move, when it's the baby face. That's what you always do. That's what you've done since the beginning of time. That's like, the most obvious booking in the world. To not do it is Vince Russo booking, thinking like, oh, this is what they always do. So we'll do the opposite. So th- that way we'll fool people. And that that's the booking that gets you nowhere. What do you mean do the exact opposite? Drew could have pinned anybody in that match. Right. You, but the, the key guy you would want, if you have any guts as a booker, the guy you have him beat is the champion because that's who he's facing. If you have no guts, you would have him beat AJ because you're not going to have him beat almost. That's or that's out of the question. So it's a question of do they have the well, guts? Was last time Kenny Omega got pinned in a tag match leading to an AEW pay per view? I have no idea. It's but never he, happened. But I don't think can, that means that Tony Khan doesn't have guts as a booker. No, if it's the right situation, if 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 it's it's the right situation, that's been done for a million times. The fact that they could do it with with Kenny Omega at any point in time, and that would be fine. Building up that, I'm sure Tony Khan will do that at some point. You know, he probably has that. I mean, I'm sure he will because he knows that booking. Just a question of when and who. You know, because you, you can't do it with every single one. And with, you know, they're building up Hell in a Cell. They're building. Well, the time that he should do it then would be this Friday because Jungle Boy is not as strong a challenger as Drew McIntyre. And quite frankly, if he's going to be getting a championship match in, well, he did. He a did week, almost. He did. He did almost put him in the snare trap in the end. But he didn't. Yeah, but he, but he, but he almost So if you're going to beat Kenny Omega to lead to a championship match, it should be this coming Friday in a tag match. They're not wasting Kenny Omega matches. He's he's too banged up. He's he's only wrestling important matches. He, if Kenny Omega was wrestling every single week, you could do that. And you could do that. I mean, it's like you could. They're not going to, though, um, just for that reason. They're not wasting Kenny Omega matches right now. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio... We got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.